excusability, no exceptions at all. So, you know, I just, I, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. The moral complication over torture and terror, right? So, again, as we said, right, the moral complication over torture and terror. A. Um, if torturing a terrorist results in information that potentially saved countless lives, it's, um, is its use justifiable? Morally, not legally, right? The question now is a moral question, right? Not a legal question. And I don't know, and this is again, not to bash Bachman as an, an individual, right? This is not to derail her attempts. I obviously don't have enough influence to do that anyway. But the point is, it, it's, it pertains, it, it's in the public sphere. She said it, it's on video for everybody to watch. I'm doing a lecture on this. It coincides, we gotta talk about it. So the question is, okay, Bachman, let's, or not even Bachman, but, you know, individual who makes the stance, who has access and privy to classified information, and suggests at least that it was because of torture or enhanced interrogation tactics why Osama bin Laden was captured, as a representative of, as a representative of someone who has classified knowledge, right, the suggestion is, okay, we understand that there are huge legal ramifications, what about morally? Could we morally justify the act of torture um, as a means of protecting vast portions of the population? And it depends on what side of the field you stand. As is the case with all philosophical discourse, the answer is it depends. It's circumstantial. If you want to use like a traditional utilitarian model, um, you might be able to and you can justify the torture of an individual to save uh, more lives, if you frame it in terms of preventing suffering, and blah, 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 blah. So yes, you can. You can also say, no, you can't, right? You can evoke uh, sort of the um, um, sanctity of life argument more contemporarily, sort of the sanctity versus quality of life. Um, obviously, the, the individual detainee isn't being um, killed, so the quality of life hasn't been, um, has been impacted. Uh, but the life is being spared, right? Um, further, the act is being used to save the lives of countless others, blah, blah, blah. So there could be a conceptual debate back and forth. I think, however, most moral theorists would say unequivocally and agree with the legal system that, no, there isn't a sense in which you can morally justify an act of torture. Why? Because the attempt to morally justify an act of torture escalates the nature of torture. If it's a slippery, it's a slippery slope. Actually, it goes this way, right? It's a slippery slope. If we say that, oh, sure, this particular tactic is of enhanced interrogation is legitimate, but these others aren't, it becomes a very, very slippery slope, and then you get to the point where you're really participating in really horrific, grotesque acts of, you know, body mutilation, and you know, you just fill in the blanks with the most horrendous things you can think of, right? So it's a slippery, slippery slope. Nothing under any circumstances can conceivably legitimize an act of torture. At least you say it publicly, right? You shouldn't, you know, if, if you're political, you, the attempt to even suggest that there is any correlation between some, um, some intelligence victory, if you will, and its association to both morally reprehensible and legally um, criminalized activity is, is just is just really really problematic so if torture if torturing a terrorist results in information that potentially saved countless lives is its use justifiable yes no why bah, 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 bah. I'm not here to answer that question what I'm here to do is to situate the discourse so that you have a, a good conceptual understanding of what's at stake B so I'll put yes no depends B should terrorists have a universal moral right not to be tortured? Okay? Should terrorists have a universal moral right not to be tortured? On Kantian grounds, absolutely. Right. Um, another thing that you could use, probably the best, the best moral ethic that you can use is Kant's formulation of the categorical imperative. Right. Uh, and Kant says that something to the effect of we have to use recognize human beings as an end in themselves and not a means to an end, 
right? So insofar as we're talking about an act of torture, we have the torturer, we have the person who is tortured, and then we have information or retribution, like vengeance, right? Insofar as the torturer tortures the individual who is targeted for torture, then I'm doing that as a means to an end, right? This is the end, this is the means, right? I'm torturing you, it's business, it's not personal. I torture you so that I get information. It's business, it's not personal. I torture him or her to gain retribution. You hurt our state, we're going to hurt you back. Right? Um, sorry, sucks for you that you got caught, but you know now you're going to feel the wrath of having messed with us, like that type of vengeful concept. So, what uh, on uh, moral grounds Immanuel Kant says is that this violates uh, the formulation of the categorical imperative. Right? I am using another human being as a means to an end rather than an end in themselves. And if I were to recognize the individual as an end in him or herself, I would recognize that this individual has exactly the same proclivities towards pain and aversions towards whatever horrendous acts that I do, and I should um, not hurt the individual because I wouldn't want to be hurt. Basically, that's the idea. Kant's formulation of the golden rule is a negative account, not sort of the traditional Christian do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but more of don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. Right? Nietzsche completely has a field day with this, but that's a whole other discussion. Right? So, should terrorists have universal moral rights not to be tortured? Absolutely. Can it be justified morally, ethically? Absolutely. They should not be tortured under any conceptual sense, and it shouldn't even be suggested publicly that it was through the use of enhanced interrogation tactics that the individual gained, or the, the, the government gained access, knowledge to, you know, capture someone. If that is the case, keep it classified, keep it quiet, right? Because you incite, you incite a lot of, you, inc you just escalate the conflict, right? Obviously, those in academia, those in human rights, those people at the UN, we can read between the lines. We're very, very smart people when it comes to this. This is what we do for a living. It's an uh, interpretive denial, right? It's the act that you think is torture really isn't torture. I never said it was torture. I was just saying that, you know, read between the lines, inherent interrogation. All you need to do is show that that act of enhanced interrogation satisfied uh, custodianship was satisfied, it was for public good or public interest was satisfied, that the information led to the abduction of uh, whatever, Osama bin Laden's courier, uh, and now you have an international fiasco. So you shouldn't, don't bring the topic up, right? It's not, it's not a grounds for public discussion. Because once it enters the public sphere, and it becomes public discussion, you know, it's just, it's just you know, you're, re, you're reopening very, very sensitive wounds because we all remember, I, I, we all remember the pictures, right? The pictures are there to see right now, right, of what happened in Abu Ghraib. So, I mean, it's just not, it's not a smart move at all. All right, uh, C. So are there moral grounds to, um, should terrorists have the universal moral right not to be tortured? Obviously, the answer is yes, they should not be tortured, right? You should not participate. Will that stop instances of torture? Absolutely not. People are still gonna be tortured, but they have the moral right not to be tortured. And I give you an example of how to um, philosophically legitimize that. Uh, uh, granted, it's a very superficial, generalized account, but it's an account nonetheless. Um, how do we resolve the notion of just desert? Now, this is important, right? Just, just desert. So, there is a sense in which you can morally account for the reprehensible the reprehensive act, the horrible, reproachable, detestable act of torturing another human being. There's also, however, a sense in which you can incorporate the, the moral discussion on um, just desert. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain this and I'll leave it to you to make your assessments, right? It's not for me. Again, as a good educator, uh, I have to be a bit of a sophist. 